Thank you, Mr. Levin, for your kind introduction. I'm Tetsuo Yamakawa, Director General of the Ministry of Internal, Internal Affairs and Communications. And today I'm going to speak on the subject of aiming to realize low carbon society via an ICT based on the study group report complied by the ministry. And because the report includes massive materials, <laughs> uh, please allow me not to be able to explain about the details. So those who uh, wants to see the details, please refer the report. The uh, report is uh, in, now in the process of translation into in English and will be published on the MIC website coming soon. Well, as Mr. Levin presented, uh, the fourth report by IPCC has estimated that based on the scenario of a fossil energy-oriented society, uh, the world average ground temperature will rise by uh, 4.0 Celsius at the end of the 21st century compared to the end of the 20th century. The, the commitment period of the Kyoto Protocol has started this year. Under such circumstances, I think we must conduct a close study of the ICT in terms of its relationship with the global warming issue. The Ministry of Internal Affairs and Communications formed a study group on the ICT policy addressing the global warming issue on September 2007 to investigate the measures that can be taken in the ICT sectors to solve global warming. The study group has discussed the following subjects. Uh, first, estimations of the reduction in power consumption and CO2 emissions in the ICT sector. And second, research and development theme that will contribute reducing CO2 emission. Third, investigation of further reduction in CO2 emissions using ICT. Fourth, international contributions to resolving global warming in the ICT sector. First, we should understand that there are two aspects when we evaluate the reduction in the environmental load with ICT. Those are the increase in CO2 emission by using ICT and the decrease in CO2 emission by improving efficiency through ICT. The study group has estimated the increase in the CO2 emission largely with power consumption due to ICT usage and the reduction in the CO2 emission by ICT in Japan until 2012. We estimated the CO2 emission associated with ICT usage separately for the telecommunications and the broadcasting sector. This slide shows an estimation of the power consumptions in the telecommunications sector. We forecasted the power consumption in the sector by estimating the number of subscribers and the amount of equipment in 2012 based on various statistical data. Well, this slide presents the result of the estimation of the power consumption in the telecommunications sector. As the ICT spreads, the amount of equipment will increase which will raise the power consumption. If we took no energy savings measure, the power consumption in 2012 will be 57 billion kilowatt hour. This is equivalent to 6.4% of the total power consumption in Japan in 2006. If we institute energy saving measures, the power consumption is estimated to be 44 billion kilowatt hour in 2012. The breakdown of the total power consumption is 
about 21% for routers and LAN switches, 20% uh, for server, including mainframe, and 30% for personal computers, both in offices and at home. These equipment accounts for the majority of the consumption. The next forecasting is for the power consumption in the broadcasting sector. We estimated the power consumption by the TV sets at home and the broadcasting equipments. In Japan, we are in the process of shifting to terrestrial digital broadcasting. The replacement of analog CLT TV sets with LCD on plasma sets may reduce power consumption. However, due to the upsizing of the screen, the actual power consumption is estimated to level off. We prospected that total power consumption in the broadcasting sector will be 15 to billion kilowatt hour. This slide shows the total power consumption and the CO2 emissions in the whole ICT sector that includes the telecommunications and the broadcasting. In 2012, the Japanese ICT sector will consume 73 billion kilowatt hour of power and emit 30 million tons of CO2. This is equivalent to 2.4% of the CO2 emission in 1990. Next, I will show on an estimated reduction in CO2 emissions by using ICT. This slide is a list of 19 examples of ICT exploitation in seven fields that were evaluated by the study group. Being specific, we targeted e-trade, e-digitization of substance, movement of people, advanced road traffic system, e-government and e-municipality, and energy control. For each cases, we estimated the spread by 2012 based of statistical data and forecasted the reduction in CO2 emissions by using ICT. This slide lists the results of estimating CO2 reduction. We forecasted a total of 68 million tons of reductions in CO2 emission. This is equivalent to 5.0% of the CO2 emission in 1990 in Japan. Well, this chart shows both increase and decrease in CO2 emissions due to ICT usage. In 2012, the ICT power consumption generates 30 million tons of CO2. However, considering 68 million tons of reductions by ICT, 38 million tons of CO2 will be reduced in total. This is equivalent to 3.0% of the CO2 emission in 1990 in Japan, which suggests an enormous possibility of ICT. The study group also discussed ICT research and development that will contribute to the reduction of CO2 emission. The study group assumed a society in 2030 we are more advanced global warning prevention measures are taken. Some examples study groups suggested include personal air conditioning, power consumption management with a small storage battery, online shopping with a scene of touch, and electronic newspapers distrib distributed every day. The investigation revealed the importance of an ICT research and development efforts for CO2 emission by reducing energy reduction. There are 
eco distribution and safety systems, including more advanced ITS, advanced production, purchase, and distribution assistance system that will use RFID, tele reality system for realizing teleconference with enhanced ambience and resource saving systems for actualizing electronic paper. ICT research and develop development will replace the flow of people, materials, and money with exchange of information. The study group pointed out that a new approach for converting an energy flow into an information transfer is important for the reduction in CO2 emissions in future. And finally, this slide summarized the recommendation by the study group. The text in red are the items expected to be reflected in the future ITU activities. First, we think that we should actively appeal the concept of ICT, which can contribute actively to global warming issues while pursuing economic growth and improved convenience. We also think that it is important to establish evaluation methods for CO2 emissions reduction effects by ICT at the international level and promote standardization. It will further promise, uh, promote the efforts to reduce CO2 emissions by ICT. The use of CO2 emissions reduction with ICT in the CDM, uh, Clean Development Me Mechanism of Developing Countries, is under consideration. We should also start re reviewing such efforts. We hope that ITU will continue such new investigations and activities so that ICT can contribute uh, to solving the global climate change issue. Japan will also actively participate in the review the relevant ITU activities. As you know, in this year, uh, important international meetings are scheduled, such as APEC, Telmin 7, WF meeting, GIIC is scheduled next week, and OECD ministerial meeting on ICCP is going to be held in June in Seoul. And G8 Summit as Toyako, Japan is July. And whose main agenda is tackling climate change. And we will hold WTSA 8 in October. Well, um, this is the whole process of discuss ICT for the climate change. And may I conclude my speech to point out that uh, taking advantage of these occasions, ITU and the member countries and sector members should play a leading role to appeal ICT to the rescue to the world. Thank you very much for your kind attention.